What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you. Now this week NVIDIA released an update to NVIDIA Broadcast, this is version 1.2.049. Now they've added some extra audio and camera effects and there is now the ability to run multiple effects with each other as well. So right now I'm using the beta room echo reduction as well, um, an effect that I do really like and I'm also using some background blur on my camera as well and I wanted to show you all of those effects and one thing I really wanted to show you is actually the performance impact, the hit that you're going to have on your GPU. So I'm using an RTX 3070 today, which is no slouch, but it does have a very big performance penalty. So let's take a little look at that then. So right now then we have no effects turned on. We are obviously using the video broadcast to bring my camera through. Okay. Um, and I am using NVENC to record as well. So we're recording through OBS on the RTX 3070. Other than that, mine is this one app that I'm gonna close there. I don't really have any applications open. In fact, I do have Premiere Pro open as well because I decided to reshoot this video, but right now I don't have any applications open other than NVIDIA Broadcast, OBS, and the task manager that you can see here. So as you can see at the moment, we're using sort of around 20% of our GPU. My video encodes using about 10%. As for dedicated GPU memory, we're using about two gigabytes of the eight gig available memory for you. So let's have a little look at NVIDIA broadcast then. So the first thing is we've got the microphone settings, there's speaker settings, and there's camera settings, okay? You can get this software from NVIDIA's website. I'll put a link in there for you as well. Using a Sony A6400 with an 18105, with an Elgato Camlink 4K, although we're at 1080p for you. Now this originally started with RTX voice before it became NVIDIA broadcast. So there is the noise removal. Um, now every time I toggle these, it does cut the audio for a second as well. So you might see some jump cuts, very, you know, a lot of jump cut videos other than me screwing up, but I'm just gonna turn that one on. So this is the noise removal effect. And do you know what, for me it's, Although it cuts out a lot of background sounds, like you can get rid of air conditioners and you know what I mean, keyboard sounds. Let me just turn the strength down. You know, it can it can cut out a lot of sounds. For me, you know, I'm just I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of the voice removal i really respect the tech and how it's doing it but i don't like what it does to the overall sound okay so i'm using a condenser microphone today it's about six inches away from me um this is the stella x2 um, now the microphone source is set to my default device which is a Presonus studio 24c obviously you can drop down and add in whatever you want so this one I'm not very keen on, but one thing I really love is the room echo, or if I was gonna use it, it would be at reduced strength. So I'm just gonna turn the room echo on. Now, the annoying thing is that these are linked as we turn the strength up. And, you know, that's that's something that I don't like, okay? Um, as we can see, the GPU usage is currently at 30%, and the memory is shot up to 2.7 gigabytes. And I don't really like that. What I prefer to have is, the room strength on only i prefer to have some background sounds luckily you know i've got quite a quiet environment and the microphone i would normally use would be an sm7b as well which has got a lot of you know noise rejection in it anyway now i am actually using while we're talking about the echoing i have got some foam in front of me here but my monitor is straight in front of me so that's going to be bouncing a lot of stuff off um i've got a room divide here that i normally hang a curtain on that's not there there is a rug below me but i've also got one of my curtains open as well big wall behind me big high ceilings this is actually an open lounge diner you know i'm in the diner area so there is a lot of echo and this thing does a fantastic job um you know personally i prefer it around the 50 percent but i'll just give you a demo and there it is at you know 100 percent. and i really like this effect i mean this is something that i'm happy to have the performance hit with and something that i'm going to use quite a lot because it it solves a really big problem for me since I've been in this area, which is spending a small fortune on microphones to try and eliminate room tone. But you always want a bit of room tone in your voice anyway, because you are sat in a room. I don't want everything to sound, you know, super dry and, you know, really super studio like. So, so we'll leave that around, you know, 50% for the rest of the video. I don't really want that, that on. We'll turn it on in a minute just to have everything on to see how much usage it is. But 
yeah, the noise removal isn't for me. You can actually record and test and listen to it back, but this Room Echo, love it. Now, there's also an option to add it to your speakers. So maybe you've got someone coming through on Discord, one of your friends having a chat with you, Zoom meeting, and they sound like ass. Well, then you can also add both of these effects as well. So I'll turn those on. And as you can see here, we're still around that 30% GPU usage, 35. Memory is at 2.8. Okay, so that's quite a lot. Let's just do a test of all RT RTX audio features on. And again, that stayed around the same. So it's good that, you know, okay, the initial hit from turning it on, I'm not really that keen on, but it's good as you add add more, it doesn't really drive up more performance. Right then, moving over to the camera, because this is where it gets real cool. So the first one is that you can now stack effects as well. So you can have multiple effects. You can also select your camera here as well. So I can switch between my cam link or my other media. Now for the video noise removal, which we'll talk about in a second, it only works up to 1080p, um, which was a little bit annoying. Um, obviously, it'd be nice that I could run my, you know, A6400 at 4K, but that's just something that, you know, I've got to deal with. So let's have a look at all the other effects first then. So the background blur is something that I really like. I really like having this background blur. And you might be thinking, let me just get to the main cam. You might be thinking, why do you need this, Troy, if you've got your Sony camera? Because anyone that watches me regularly knows that I've got lenses to blur my background um, behind me. Not as much as this, but, you know, I've got the ability to do it. Now, the reason is, is on a lot of Sony lenses and a lot of what people do when they buy these mirrorless cameras is you run it at the lowest aperture because you don't want loads of light in front of you. Um, if you're streaming and stuff, you might just have some little fill lights, little key lights, stuff like that. The problem is going to be is if you can see the bookcase behind me, let me just turn the effect off. If you see the bookcase behind me. Now, if I was using the kit lens or even this 18 to 105, when my aperture is like fully wide open, so at 3.5 or f4, like this lens, I'm telling you, it it focus breathes, it pulses and moves around so much. I mean, so much on that little bookcase behind it there. So what I actually do is is run at a much higher aperture. I'm actually at f8. So then you can see that you you know you can see everything behind me, but I don't want to see it. But it means that I'm staying in focus. The face is tracking me, and it's not jipping out every time I move. It's a problem. A lot of people get Sony cameras because of the super fast autofocus, but it does come with its own problems, especially when you're quite close to the lens as well. So with this background blur, you know, it's fantastic. You know, I can change the strength on it. I normally just go for the performance mode. You know, the GPU usage, we're still around that 30%. Let's put it in quality and we'll crank that right up. Nice. I like the background blur. Now, some other effects you've got is background replacement as well. I did have a nice picture, but it seems to have disappeared you can see we'll hold some things up one thing as well i knew it struggled with outside of my face is the mountain dew bottle because it's green there we go as soon as we go out there but anything in front of me it does a very good job as well and you can obviously select your own picture i think that's what i had before was you know maybe you want to see what i'm actually looking at face forward this is my desk and gaming setup area um, and I'll just change that to the performance mode as well. So the uh, the memory usage has sort of spiked a little bit. We're up to three gigs of my five gig VRAM usage. I mean, you're going to have to be lowering game settings if you want to turn all this stuff on. Um, and then there is also complete background removal. Just go to main cam again. So we've got a complete background removal there. And again, do you know what I mean? Just something that's green. I wonder if I hold my vape up. Eh, it's all right. So we're at performance at the moment. I mean, it's not as good as a green screen. And a lot of it is going to come down to your lighting as well. But some really nifty little effects and features there. And then there is this one as well. This is, let me go back a little bit. This is auto frame. So it should track me as I weave around, baby. So that is the auto frame feature. So we'll go back to background blur because that's the one i like now the other one which i'm sorry i can't give you like a proper pro demo of today so let's look at the one that i know a lot of you would be interested in then so this is video noise removal okay now i obviously can't really show this off because it does work very well um and i can't show that off because i don't have a webcam and even though i'm at f8 you know i'm at 1200 iso okay which is maybe high for some cameras but um for this it doesn't really introduce that much noise 
on this Sony camera, but it's definitely a very good feature. You get an option between strong and weak. And like I said, you can have two on with each other. I can't see massively where you'd be wanting to use this noise removal, although from the other videos I've watched, it does improve your face quality a little bit. I don't think it's that much that you would use it with another effect. That's just me personally, from what I've seen, you may be different, but where somewhere where this would be very useful is, you know, if you're wanting to make videos like this, but you're only using a webcam, you know, there's going to be times where there's a lot of stuff in your background and all around here, you know, all around here is where you're going to be getting a lot of noise and there's going to be a lot of noise in your picture. But I don't think it's so bad if you were to say, you know, maybe you wanted to use some sort of background removal. Let's just do that now. So we just go background removal. And then you sort of shrink yourself right down. So you're in the corner somewhere like this on some gameplay footage. Like even webcams look really decent like this. You know, so I really do think that, well, you know, where you'd be using that is if you don't have a mirrorless camera and you wanted to do some full screen stuff. If you're doing gaming, I wouldn't use it at all. So we've got everything sort of cranked on. We just need to turn that microphone on. So yeah, everything is sort of cranked right up now. Microphone's on, no, no, speakers is on. Dual effects, all of this stuff. Let's have a little look at our usage. So 3.3 gigs of VRAMs being used, which isn't the worst. If you're doing a 1080p stream, having five gigs left is more than enough. The problem I'm seeing here is the GPU usage. We're all the way cranked up. Sorry, I've got to turn this mic off. You know, that's a lot of usage. And another problem of somewhere where you could run into as well is going to be encoder overload so if you're streaming as well i've made a whole separate video on how you can reduce encoder overload so um you know check it out in the description below but it's just too many things you know if you want it all turned on it's just too much usage and something like this is where i'm probably going to make a separate video about this because i don't want to get too into it but this is somewhere where i think you need to have the ability even though graphics cards are so hard to get almost a second card in your system if you were going to do it this way because if you add something like when it comes out like an rtx 3050 that nvidia broadcast would know to just look at that gpu to handle all of this and do all your stream there's a good case for that because you might be thinking well why do you want two gpus in your system you know sli is dead you're not using it for that but to use it for all the other stuff i think that would actually be a really good option that you can add because you can already use obs to look at a second gpu so if you could add that to broadcast as well, that would be fantastic. You know, that might be a graphics card you spend 200, 250 pounds on, let's just say, you know, without the, the mining scalping premium. But it's something that I think would be very good because it saves you from buying a whole second PC. So if I was going to be using these features, they're going to be more for making videos like this and like I'm making today. OK, that's what it's going to be for. That's where I'm going to be using things. I think the only thing that I would maybe turn on would be that echo reduction if I was streaming. But like I said, I normally use like an SM7B anyway, so there's not as much reduction. Um, and there's not as much, you know, echo and stuff bouncing around the room. And I always think it's good to have a little bit of room tone in your voice anyway. I don't know if I already said that earlier. So I think all of these features I'm going to use more for content creation or having Zoom and Teams meetings, because even though they implement a lot of that stuff you know in you know teams and zoom they've added all these sort of ai features now they're not as good as running it locally from your system so you know that's just my thoughts on it i'd be very interested in yours but for me you know when you start cranking it all on it's just it's just far too much usage okay but i really do like all the features and it's definitely an app that i think you should install if you've got an rtx graphics card and like I said, I do think now maybe for all my voiceovers, I'm probably just going to run through broadcast and just put that Rheem Echo one on. That's definitely a feature I could like and use. That's another good feature. Even... Anyway, I am thinking about making a video of things that I would like to see added to the video broadcast. And I'm also thinking of adding in that video other ways I think that they could maybe reduce the overhead a bit as well, because it's mad, isn't it? You know, they say these are RTX features. We've got these RTX cores and AI cores and all of that encoders and all these great things, but it's using a lot of usage. I feel like I'm just waffling on now. But if you'd like to see that video, if you want me to make that video, let me know because I've got some really cool ideas on how broadcast can become like the app that you want. Anyway, that's it for today. Make sure you subscribe. I'll stop waffling. I'll be back with some more videos very soon.